Hi, I'm George Bridegum, producer, casting director, and second AD for Ashes Homecoming. I actually first met Josh back in 2011. We were in an acting class together, and it was shortly after that, uh, he said that he needed some help with uh, his first major project that he was doing, Steven Spielberg and the Return to Film School, and helped him produce it, uh, helped him do some of the casting on it. We made another movie, Star Trek Wars, and it just eventually spiraled into a third movie, Ash's Homecoming. I have seen Joshua Ho, the director's work, before. Very excited to hear that he was doing a third film. Well, I thought Joshua's picked another one of those subjects that people are really going to love to see. It's always fun to work on a project that is based in something like, like Pokemon that's so well known. Um, and then they kind of like switch it and flip it on its head. People sort of get a new take on an old story. I thought it was a good story because, you know, we hadn't really caught into Ash's home life or where he came from, and I thought it would make a good movie. The connection between Ash and Misty, I mean, having to have go through all those adventures and then having that uh, sort of breakup at the end, to have them uh, come back after having so much time apart, I think that was really rewarding. God, the Pokemon film! so awesome because I love Pokemon I've always loved Pokemon then I was like Misty can I play Misty and I was like determined to get this role I was like this is my role so the casting process was actually pretty crazy and we will literally get hundreds of submissions so it's my job to go through a lot of those submissions and we were still for a lot of those roles calling in over a hundred people to audition the whole process actually took us a couple of months. I think we ultimately got, I think, the best cast that we could ask for. So we were in Space Station. Basically, when you guys called me in, I was hecka nervous. I was like, okay, I just forgot all my lines. <laughs> Misty is a very strong character. That strength, that like toughness, that power that she has, but with the circumstance she was in, being with Gary and having her regrets with, with Ash. Professor Oak, um, a good-hearted guy, and, uh, and I wanted to stay on that, the good-heartedness, even though he was a little miffed at first with this young student. <laughs> Daisy's a bit, a bit obscure, she is. So, I mean, Joshua and I talked a little bit. He told me a little bit about the role, and then I watched some of the cartoon clips to get a feel for, for Daisy. And with the storyline taking place farther in the future, there was a bit of leeway with character choice there. She cares a lot about her daughter and uh, her husband, Brock. I believe in the actual story. Brock is kind of like a wannabe ladies man but it's really interesting because there's sort of a reversal in this film of how now Brock has actually kind of like got his life together and is settled down and has a daughter now and is a father you can just feel how important family is um, and I think that, that the film actually really hints on that I was doing a lot of the location scouting. Mount Moon, which we found at uh, Irvine Regional Park, I found that just kind of hiking through the area once. I found this really cool uh, rock, it's called Rooster Rock, and I'm like, we could totally use that as like a cave or you know something with Mount Moon. It was actually Kathy who found the lake location, which was literally just you know blocks away from her apartment in Long Beach, which I thought was crazy. The lake scene. That was super muddy. <laughs> I really did enjoy that though. Just like being there and just in a peaceful setting. I slipped and fell once, but you guys didn't see and I kept it to myself and, but now it's out, so never mind. <laughs> the water scenes were my favorite scenes. Um, and that pool was heated as well. So it was really, didn't want to get out. The drone was actually quite cold because I, I, when it's over the top of you, it's like blowing air down and you're like wet. So I got to do. <laughs> Shooting the funeral scene, that was my first day on set. There were just so many people, we had all these extras. It was so much fun, you could tell everyone was happy to be there and excited to be a part of this project. The decor and the artwork made me think, wow, I wouldn't mind being the guy who works here with all of these Pokeballs. And, and everybody was working so fast. Plus, as an old man, I went and took a nap, but hey, that has to happen now and then. Josh showed up to set, I think on the second day of filming, 
in full Ash costume, and it was the absolute best. I was like, listen, I'll do anything for this guy because he's showing up ready, okay? He is excited, and we're going to make this movie the best ever. I mean, I always like, you know, hanging out with people on set and working with people that I hadn't worked with before, especially towards the end, like everybody knew each other. Seeing the script come to life was really cool. The main work that I did for Ash's Homecoming was integrating Pikachu in a lot of the live action footage. I believe the most difficult thing that I had to work on for the film was getting rid of that red blanket. I had to meticulously go frame by frame, recreating fingers, parts of clothing. Some of the stuff we did for Foley's, we did a lot of footsteps on different types of terrain. Like we had the Mount Moon, which was kind of sandy with rocks. For the storm sequence, we were very lucky to have a clean blue sky so we can replace that with clouds from our recent rainstorms that I had to take pictures of, as well as making sure that the shots where we had uh, rain falling on the actors matched the recreated rain using After Effects. We got a bunch of people in the church again. Yeah, we recorded them doing different sounds and different uh, reactions for different parts of the scene. Our voice actress was Vivi Nguyen. She did the voices for Pikachu, Spiro, Caterpie, and the other Pokemon voices. We set up a little recording studio in my room, and we recorded her into the Pro Tools session. Each time you get a new cut and there's different improvements being made, whether it's the sound, whether it's the color correction, whether it's the music. I mean, it gets progressively better and better until you finally saw what we saw at the premiere, and it just blew my mind that that's something that we made. The fact that there was a huge premiere, and we had like a whole theater to ourselves, a whole red carpet. That was like incredible. It's just a really satisfying experience to see all the hard work that everybody puts in, to see it really come to life. It was really cool to see it on the big screen. You know, I almost got teary-eyed at some parts. When I start crying, I start like laughing. So I'm like, I love this. <laughs> but yeah, it, it as a final product was absolutely stunning. I got to play Misty, that's pretty cool to put on your resume. It's worth coming all the way down to Long Beach because there's so much talent here. From these two films, I'm going, how much talent is down here? You know, I definitely met people that I want to work with again, which is great. And then I think just an immense amount of pride being part of something that is just so well done and that people have received so openly and really enjoyed. I feel very proud of uh, what I've accomplished because back then I didn't know if I was able to do these kind of effects before, but after doing this it has, has helped me grow and hopefully I can take this into uh, any future careers I want to go. I mean you just learn more and more every time you do one of these films. So just the amount of knowledge that I've gained, the amazing people that I've met on set, you just get a lot out of doing these films. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making this the very best. The very best. The very best. Like no film. Like no film. Like no film ever was.